actually, when I was writing it, the earlier volumes, uh, what I've been doing is getting a different professor, uh, scholar, to write a foreword for each of the different volumes. So the um, professor, Thomas Hopkins, he wrote the foreword for the second volume. And um, I had sent him a copy of the first volume, which is this one. And then I sent him the manuscript for the second one, which was another 600 pages. Because this volume covers four months of Prabhupada's life. The second volume covers two months. And uh, when I sent him the information, after a month or two, I rang him up and I said, well, I'm getting ready for publication. Have you written a foreword yet? So he laughed. He said, no. I, first of all, I said, have you seen you know, the material that I sent you? He said, yes. So I said, have you read it? He said, no. <laughs> I said, well, you know, will you be ready on time? He said, yeah, don't worry. He said, I'll, I'll read something. He said, but there's so much there. He said, then he laughed. He said, you Krishna conscious devotees, he said, you've got more on one day in the life of Prabhupada than the Christians have on the whole life of Jesus. So it was a compliment. Um, not a criticism, of course, it was a, but it was a compliment. And at the same time, I thought, well, that's the way it should be, because we're in a unique position in history. You know, there's never been such an opportunity to be able to record the life of a pure devotee as we have had, you know, with all our electronic devices, uh, you know, because in those days it was tape recorders, now, of course, it's MP3 players, but... Uh, you know, tape recorders, we had all the written documents, uh, we had, you know, cameras, video cameras. So, if we don't record Prabhupada's life in detail, it would be a tremendous failure on our part, um, you know, hundreds of years ago, or even 50 or 60 years ago. I was just speaking the other day with one of our devotees that, you know, Prabhupada's spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he had ordered Prabhupada to preach in the English language and it was on his order and inspiration that Prabhupada came to the West. But we have never heard the sound of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's voice. We've seen pictures of him and of course we have his writings, but we've never heard the sound of his voice, we've never seen a film of him. But with Prabhupada it's a lot different. We've got hundreds of hours of audio uh, and visual and many thousands and thousands of documents in our archives that we've been able to collect together that are all directly pertaining to Prabhupada's life and to the creation of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So it would be tremendously remiss on our part if we didn't you know, gather all that material together and present that for the future generations of spiritual seekers. So anyway, this is a small attempt uh, to preserve you know, the legacy of Srila Prabhupada, at least um, from that small period that I was with him. And this um, seminar series that I've been presenting, Prabhupada, the Living Bhagavatam, is an attempt to just reveal different aspects of Srila Prabhupada's practice of devotional activity. Not just speak about the philosophy, but put it into a context uh, and give practical examples, you know, of how he was, say, chanting or taking prasadam or, you know, the principles of cleanliness or living in the holy places. So there's different topics. So this is a thematic approach and I thought tonight it would be nice just to have a glimpse at the principle of, as I say, satsanga or sadhu sangha, uh, the association of devotees. Because if we want to make any advancement at all in spiritual life, it's not possible to do it alone. You know, we need the help of others that are also practicing. Birds of the feather flock together, and like minds think alike. So um, in the Shastra that we have, then it's stressed very much that this is the catalyst, if you like, for making advancement. Uh, Rupa Goswami gives the principles, different stages of spiritual development. So, Adho Shraddha means that in the very beginning there has to be a little bit of faith. You know, at least some willingness to inquire, a little open mind. What is this? 
let me find out. This looks interesting. Maybe I'll learn something from it. That's called faith. But then the very next step is sadhu sangha. Association with people who are practicing spiritual life. By that association, then that faith becomes shored up. It becomes firm. Uh, one becomes a little convinced. And then when one becomes convinced at a certain point, then one feels that one should take up these spiritual practices himself. So, And then from there, then there's a whole progression of different levels of devotional life that we can attain if we stick with the process. But the first principle is sadhu sangha, or association with devotees. So this is a sangha, a meeting of devotees. I think you have this every week, yeah? And uh, this is a very, very important um, activity if you want to make advancement in spiritual life. And even if one becomes very advanced in devotional life, still the association of other devotees is very, very important. It remains an important principle all the way through. So um, in Bhagavad Gita, which is the ABCs, as they say, of spiritual life, this is Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita as it is. In the ninth chapter, verse 32, Prabhupada comments there in his uh, purport that everyone is eligible for the supreme destination. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, chapter 4, verse 18, it is stated that even the lowest, who are called chandalas or dog eaters, can be purified by association with a pure devotee. Therefore, devotional service and the guidance of a pure devotee are so strong that there is no discrimination between the lower and higher classes of men. Anyone can take to it. The most simple man taking shelter of a pure devotee can be purified by proper guidance. So it's open to everybody by the mercy of the devotees. So uh, naturally enough then, when I was traveling with Prabhupada, the principle of association was dis discussed quite often. Of course, it was demonstrated every day, uh, because that's exactly what we were doing. We were living with Srila Prabhupada, traveling with Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada was traveling to many places as possible just to give his association to as many people as possible all around the world. So. Um, on February the 23rd, 1976, Prabhupada was in Mayapur. That's our world headquarters, the birthplace or the appearance place of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, things were gearing up for the annual Gopunima festival, the appearance day of Lord Chaitanya. So during his class in the morning, Prabhupada described the important role that the temple plays in helping people to advance in spiritual life by Agyata Sukriti, or unknown pious activity. Prabhupada told us, Sukriti means the way by which we can approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is called Sukriti, and Agyata Sukriti. So this temple means to give a chance to the people in general, Agyata Sukriti, that anybody who will come to the temple where the deity is there, and even by imitating others, if one offers obeisances to the Lord, that is taken into account. That is not useless because that is Krishna's desire. He gives the four principles. Anybody know what the four principles are? Yes, we have a pandit amongst us. <laughs> yes, four principles are given in Bhagavad Gita in two, two places. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me and just offer a little obeisances. So these four principles will deliver you from the bondage of material existence and without a doubt you will come back to me. So, so simple thing. It is not at all difficult. A child he can do this. An old man can do this. A learned man can do this. Without any knowledge can do this. Even an animal can do this. So very simple. Back to yoga is very simple. Prabhupada stressed that any person can advance, even unknowingly, 
simply by gaining the association of devotees, and our temples were meant to offer that opportunity. Therefore, somehow or another, if someone comes into the temple, and even by imitating, one offers obeisances. So we have seen so many people. Our devotees are offering their obeisances, so they also think, oh, well, it's the etiquette, so let me do that. So by association. Therefore, it is recommended, sadhu sangha. Simply by association, one can be delivered. It is so nice thing. Unfortunately, they'll not associate with the sadhus. <laughs> Even if you make it easy, people are so unfortunate in this age of Kali that they have no interest. <laughs> Even if you go out and you canvas, you know, come and find out a little bit about why you're here, where you're going, what life is for, 